Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 BMS. Today we're looking at low altitude navigation and targeting, infrared for night, or Lantern. Lantern combines the AN-AAQ-13 navigation pod, or NVP, and the AN-AAQ-14 targeting pod, or TGP, allowing the F-16 to fly at low altitude at night and in adverse weather, to attack ground targets with precision guided weapons. The NVP is mounted under the engine inlet on the left of the aircraft. Its two main components are the forward imaging navigation set, or FINS sensor, and the Kuband terrain following radar, or TFO. FINS is a wide field of view, forward looking infrared, or FLIR system. It provides an infrared image which can be displayed on the MFD and HUD. TFO features include terrain following, obstacle warning, and limited adverse weather flying. The TFR detects terrain along the flight path, generating vertical steering cues for the pilot when used in manual mode, and steering commands for the flight control system, or FLCS, when in automatic mode, in order to maintain a pilot selected altitude. The TGP is mounted under the engine inlet on the right of the aircraft, and includes a high resolution FLIR sensor, a laser designator rangefinder for precise delivery of laser guided munitions, a missile boresight correlator for automatic lock-on of the AGM-65 Maverick imaging infrared missiles and software for automatic target tracking. Each pod weighs approximately 500 pounds and adds an additional 25 units of drag. We're at Kunsan Air Base at South Loop in hardened aircraft shelter 43 and the time is 1925. Before starting the engine, manual TF flyup enable. Flyup protection will now be available in manual terrain following mode. With main power available after engine start, left hard point on, right hard point on. The NVP and TGP are now powered. Interior lighting as desired. The primary instrument panel knob controls instrument backlighting. The flood consoles knob controls the cockpit floodlights. And the data entry display knob controls DED brightness. The FLIR and TFR should be placed in standby mode as soon as possible as FLIR requires between 8 and 15 minutes to cool down and TF4 3 minutes to warm up before use. The message not timed out will be displayed on their MFD pages until then. To turn FLIR on and place it in standby mode, press OSB 14, then OSB 16 to view the FLIR page and OSB 4. To turn TFR on and place it in standby mode, press OSB 14, then OSB 17 to view the TFR page, and OSB 4. We can also set the ride control and clearance settings. Ride options are hard, soft and smooth. Hard and smooth options limit pull-up commands to 4G and push-over commands to minus 0.9G. Smooth provides peak-to-peak -peak flying, while the hard option allows the aircraft to fly closer to obstacles before commanding a pull-up. The soft ride option limits pull-up commands to 2G and push-over commands to minus 0.5G. We will use the hard ride option. Set clearance plane, or SCP, is the altitude the TFR will attempt to maintain. The options available are listed on the right of the TFR page, from 1000 feet above ground level, or AGL, to 200 feet AGL. Very low clearance, or VLC, sets clearance to 100 feet AGL. VLC is used when in normal mode with VLC selected. It should only be used over water or flat terrain. Turn rate is significantly reduced in VLC mode, and the steering select and heading select functions of Auto TF are disabled in this mode. SCP should initially be set to 1000 feet. To set SCP to 1000 feet, 
Press OSB 6. The Combined Altitude Radar Altimeter or CORA Altitude Low Advisory Altitude Warning should be set to SCP-10%. To set CORA air low to 900 feet, press DCS left to return to the CNI page, press ICP2 and with the scratch pad on the first line, enter 900 with the ICP numeric keys and press ICP enter. The value entered is also displayed on the hood next to the AL notation. This will flash when altitude is below CARA ALO. And with gear up, the voice message system will give an audible altitude warning. Note that CARA ALO should be changed whenever SCP is changed. To set MSL floor to the Korean transition altitude, move the scratch pad down to the MSL floor field with DCS down, enter 14000 and press ICP enter. The TFR advisory field is the altitude below which the red altitude box will flash. This is usually set to minimum safe altitude, or MSA. MSA is the lowest altitude which will provide a minimum clearance of 1000 feet above all objects within a 25 mile radius. To set MSA to 7500 feet, move the scratch pad down to the TFR advisory field with DCS down, enter 7500 and press ICP enter. RF normal. The radio frequency or RF switch determines the operating modes available to the TFR. In the silent position TFR is placed in standby mode and cannot be used. In the quiet position TFR will only function in weather or WX and low probability of intercept or LPI modes. In the normal position TFR operates in all its modes normal, WX, LPI and VLC. For information on the active runway, press T to access the tower menu, press T again to view the second page, and select option 6. Sherpa 2-1, Kunis on approach, runway 18 for takeoff. As runway 18 is the active runway, we know we're at South Loop. To reach end of runway or EOR North, Follow taxiway Charlie, turn right onto Papa, and left onto Echo. A TOR North, radar altimeter on. When not timed out is no longer displayed on the FLIR page, FLIR can be bore sighted. First, place FLIR in operational mode by pressing OSB 20. Display the FLIR image on the hood by rotating the ICP brightness wheel. Adjust the FLIR gain level by using the up and down arrows in the ICP FLIR section. Gain and level values are displayed at the top left of the FLIR MFD page. To begin bore sighting FLIR, press OSB 10. 
In the real aircraft, flare bore sighting is usually performed on the ground, but it is also done in the air using an aircraft as reference. However, in BMS, because of the long flare cooldown period, bore sighting may be done in the air and with a ground reference. Adjust the flare image position on the HUD with the radar cursor keys, which are the shifted arrow keys by default. Align the flare image with a clearly defined feature, such as a ridgeline, building, road or river. When satisfied with flare image position, exit bore sight mode by pressing OSB10. The four TF4 mode options are listed on the left of the TF4 MFD page. The first is normal mode. In this mode, vertical steering cues are transmitted to the hood for manual terrain following or G commands to the FLCS for automatic terrain following. It has the most accurate terrain following performance, turning flight capability and look into turn. This mode is usually used for all terrain types, in low threat situations and in good weather. Low probability of intercept or LPI is usually used on long, straight legs where minimum manoeuvring is required and potential threats are present. As TF4 transmissions are reduced to minimise detection, turning is done at a reduced rate and look into turn is not available. This mode can also be selected by placing the RF switch in the quiet position. Weather or WX mode minimises the interference of false returns from rain and clouds, reducing the risk of a weather flyup. Process data is reduced from 36,000 feet to 15,000 feet in front of the jet, and TF4 local angle is reduced from 10 to 5 degrees. This may also degrade the capability to detect man-made objects and low reflective surfaces. This mode should be selected if clouds and or precipitation are on your flight route. It can also be selected with the WX button on the ICP. As the weather is poor, we'll use WX mode. To place the TFR in WX mode, press OSB 17. Verify ground return on the TFR confidence display by confirming the raw video and stored terrain feed. A pseudo logarithmic range scale runs along the bottom of the raw video. The current TFR mode is displayed to the top left, with the azimuth scan indicator at the top right. The Auto Fly Up Obstacle Warning Line, or OWL, and the Zero Command Line are to the left. The ZCL will change as SCP changes. The horizontal line in the centre of the display is the Flight Path Reference Line. The line rises as the aircraft climbs and drops as the aircraft descends. Verify that the Manual Terrain Following Box is displayed on the hood. This is the Manual TF4 Vertical Steering Queue. The flight path marker, or FPM, should be maintained inside the box for terrain following. Note that because airspeed is below the 360 knot minimum operating speed, the airspeed scale is flashing, and limit is displayed on the hood. A yellow flashing TFR limits box is also displayed on the TFR MFD page. When airspeed is at or above minimum operating speed, these notifications clear. If aircraft bank angle exceeds 60 degrees, limit and TFR limits are displayed again. The manual TF box disappears if bank angle is held for more than 2 seconds. With wings level, Limits disappear and the manual TF box reappears. Due to antenna scan limitations, valid G commands can only be made within certain parameters. When these parameters are exceeded, a flashing limit caution appears on the hood. Cautions, warnings and advisory indications include a combination of visual and audible cues on the hood and MFD. To activate automatic terrain following, Press the Advanced Mode Push Button indicator. Active illuminates in green when Auto TF is enabled. The aircraft will descend to the programmed SCP of 1000 feet. In Auto TF mode, roll and pitch are controlled by the FLCS, with roll commanded by steering select or heading select switch positions on the miscellaneous panel. 
To toggle between manual automatic and manual incrementation of the active steer point, select the steer point DED page by pressing ICP4 and press DCS right. Note that the auto TF line has replaced the manual TF box on the hood. If no terrain appears on the hood, it indicates that the TFR is not sensing terrain within the terrain preset gates. As the aircraft approaches reflective terrain, the message should disappear. However, low reflective areas, such as smooth water, may cause the no terrain message to continue to be displayed. At 1000 feet, push the stick forward to descend. At a low, which was previously set to 900 feet, the voice message system will announce an altitude warning and at 750 feet a flyup occurs. Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Flyups are maneuvers commanded if altitude falls below 75% of SCP, which in this case is 750 feet. Flyups are automatic when using auto TF and manual TF when the manual TF flyup switch on the flight control panel is in the enable position. If more than a 2G flyup is required to clear terrain, the TFO will issue a G limit warning and a 3G flyup will be commanded. If a flyup greater than 3G is required, the TFO will issue an obstacle warning and initiate a 4G flyup. A break X will be displayed on the MFDs if a 3 or 4G flyup is required. A flyup terminates at 300 knots or 45 degrees of pitch to prevent an aircraft stall. The pilot should resume control at or before this point, as the aircraft will not be returned to level flight automatically. The flyup is terminated with the paddle switch, which is Altair by default. When the paddle switch is pressed and held down, the active light on the AMS is replaced by an amber standby light to indicate the override. Up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Look into turn or lit and snap look capabilities are accessed with digital management switch or DMS up, which is control home by default. With a bank angle above 5 degrees, press and hold down DMS up. The flare view will shift slightly into the turn. Release DMS up to exit the look into turn view. To use snap look, press and hold down DMS up, then use the radar cursor keys to adjust the flare view. Releasing DMS up exit snap look. When looking to turn or snap look are active, the FPM is dashed. To return to manual TF mode, press the AMS switch. The active light will extinguish. To disengage Lantern, return FLIR and Tier 4 to their standby states. I hope you enjoyed this look at Lantern, feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.